was I was with you for a bit, <laughs> but this is actually ridiculous. I okay. guess we can't get no, over. No, no, no. <laughs> We need to defend ourselves a little bit first. So we're those people that whine about something that happened 15 years ago. For good reason, though. Let's find out. Hey, give your balls a tug, you fucking pussy. Colin Campbell, hockey director at the time. And there were leaked emails from Colin Campbell complaining to the refs about how his son was getting mistreated by the refs and how he was calling Mark Servard a baby after taking the hit. Oh, blow to the head there, and Savard went down, and he is... Uh... Which is important because his son played on the Bruins team, right. and Matt Cook didn't get any suspensions from that. So there's a huge conflict of interest between the player and the hockey director of the NHL mm -hmm. with leaked emails. Proof. 2011, against the big, bad Bruins, we got Zdeno Chara, Ugh. a giant who almost killed Max Pacioretty. Oh my god, that's right. Oh god, almost tore his head off. Milan Lucic, <sighs> the most skilled goon back in the day. Yeah, I think yeah. it was against Toronto. Yeah, well, of course you remember because it's <laughs> against Toronto. Brad Marchand. Oh my. He looks like a rat. Like his face. It, hey, oh. don't talk about my favorite player. <laughs> Sean Thornton. Oh my god, I forgot about Sean Thornton. One of the best hitters and fighters of the game. Fourth liner, yeah. Andrew Ferenc, who is... Very competitive. Adam McQuaid, who was also a menace fourth liner. Then you have Daniel Sedin, who had more penalty minutes than any of these players that I mentioned on the Bruins. One of the most humble and nice players has more penalty minutes than those four goons? This is bullshit. <laughs> now you just sound like a homer. Oh. Marshawn got a 10 minute unsportsmanlike conduct for this. Just kidding. There was no penalty on the play. <laughs> just kidding. Daniel Sedin got 10 minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Disgusting. Daniel Sedin, during his whole season, he had 32. Could it be Colin Campbell? That's what the fans are saying. That's what we're saying. But are we just saying that because we're salty about it? Number two is Aaron Rome got a four game suspension in the finals. And this hit, looking at it now, it's very dirty, very late. If this happened today, YouTube would go nuts. But back in 2011, it was like low key legitimate. Like this Paul Korea hit. People love Scott Stevens for blindside hits. This play on Mark Savard, Matt Cook didn't get any suspensions. This direct elbow to the head by Pronger got a two game suspension in the finals. But it just so happens that the Canucks are the first and last team in NHL history for a player to receive four games of suspension in the finals. People forget about this hit where Mason Raymond literally broke his back. He had a fractured spine. Got folded. First and all the pressure was coming from Boychuk in the upper body area. Couldn't even get upright. He was bent over completely after what Pierre talked about. about and he was never the same player again after that. And Johnny Boychuk didn't even get a suspension for it and got five minutes for roughing. Shh. For breaking someone's back. Hug. I'm just kidding. There is no penalty. Oh my god. So number three, Canucks fans are suspecting that the referees were biased against them. He told Alex Burroughs before the game that I'm gonna embarrass you because a month earlier, Burroughs embellished and he got away with it. Uh -huh. So this referee came up to him and said, I'm gonna embarrass you now. And then in that game, Burroughs got all the penalties in the most crucial point of the game. Like and Burroughs spoke out in yeah. the interview and then Burroughs got fined. Wow. And then the referee got retired, quote unquote. Wow. So that's something that you would imagine would never happen. And it's especially concerning considering the fact that when Dennis Weidman hit the NHL referee, after that incident, they call it the Weidman effect, uh. where Calgary was turned into number one team in the NHL with penalties. the most, yeah, most penalties. Uh. So they're just fucking little salty, petty losers. We should also mention why Canucks fans should let it go and stop whining. Please, enlighten me. We can't just be covered in our own bias because oh that makes God, us ignorant. Bro. So Colin Campbell, before the finals, he was moved to a different position. Because of the emails or because of a conflict of interest? We don't or? know. Oh. But the suspension that Aaron Rome got was not influenced by Campbell. Mm. Or so it seems. It was actually Brendan Shanahan. Which I'm guessing maybe because it's his first big suspension and he wants to set a benchmark. A precedent, yeah. So I think that's why he got a four game. <sighs> bad timing. <laughs> talk. And also, we can't be saying like, oh, like the refs are so bad because that's every single NHL game that I see. Yeah. And you don't like Toronto. I have sympathy for Toronto. But when you see like Toronto fans be like, oh, that was the worst refereeing ever. 
do you really care? Right. No. no. Do you think they care? No. no. <laughs> do you think they care when you whine about something that happened 15 years ago? No. Unfortunately, no. That just makes us a loser. And my last point is the Canucks weren't the most friendliest competitors back mm. then. Tell Kelly I said hi. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> there would be lots of time to settle this out. Give your balls a time, you fucking pussy. She's a great gal. <laughs> And Mark Recchi even said that he's never hated a team more than the Canucks in his entire career. And I'm sure the Canucks did something to rile up the referees. Sure. So in a way, the reason why some officiating didn't go our way is because the Canucks are just simply dicks. And you could see it. There's no way you cannot see it. Number five, Luongo was pulled like three, two times. He also had a couple shoutouts. He did, but one game, he let in eight goals or seven goals. Canucks scored no goals. Boston scored four, game seven. It's just at what point do we just say it was the Canucks' fault? Give your balls a tug, you fucking pussy.